So now we're going to talk about the actual template language. As I mentioned before, there's more than one templating language. We're using the default one. And I, I think it's actually one of the better ones, uh, this whole notion of double curly braces. Uh, there's all kind of templating, templating engines, and a lot of them use these double curly braces. Sometimes there's a one called mustache because the curly braces look like a mustache. Um, so this, this double curly braces, you, you learn it in Django and you'll find it all kinds of other places. Um, I, I've used it in front end processing. This is back end processing because we're doing all the substitution in the back end. So there's, there's basically a couple things you can do. The double curly braces um, do substitution. And one thing that's cool about this, if you recall, I talked about how you have to escape data that came from the user. Anything in the double curly braces is automatically escaped. As a matter of fact, you have to do something to not escape it because it turns out that 98% of the time you want to escape data that you're printing out because it doesn't change what it looks like, but it does make sure that it's safe. If you add this, this vertical bar safe afterwards, this vertical bar safe afterwards, that's like a modifier. I think it's called a filter in Django that says, look, don't run this. Don't run that filter on it to do the HTML entities. Um, just do it as is. I know there may be HTML in that, but I've taken care of that because I am the application developer. You can call uh, functions, like you, with the, the code is the percent, uh, curly brace percent. And in there you, you tend to call a code. This is like code. This is like calling a, a method or a utility code. And so the first part of this is what you're calling. And then later you can have some parameters. So this URL says, I want to find the, a, a URL for the view cat detail and I'm going to take the number that is the current cat primary key for the cat record and put that on as the URL as well. Um, the author in this case is a, and we'll see this later, is a model item and get absolute URL is a method inside that model item. You can have sort of ifs and if then elses and pretty, it's kind of Python like which is nice in that you don't really have to learn new things. There is looping code that's in there, like a for loop that we'll talk about in a bit. And then there is uh, X blocks that can be replaced. So you can have a template that sort of pulls in another template and then substitutes in part of it. So you can have whole blocks of substitution, not just little strings of substitution. And so we'll talk about each of these in turn. So here we go, we'll start with a real simple one. And we're, we're not, and you'll, you'll notice that in this particular simple one, uh, we have no parameters on the command, on the URL. We, so we don't have any parameters here. I'm going back to a non-class style, just a simple function, and I'm not sending a context. The context would be the third parameter on the render call, and so I'm just saying, hey, and this is what you do um, when you just have some static HTML that you don't really need to change anything, and so that's what's sitting in here. It's just a simple page. Um, there's this thing called a built-in template view class that sort of does exactly this thing, that just grabs a template, turns it into an HTTP, uh, grabs a file, turns it into an HTTP response, and sends it back to Django. So that's just a super simple template. Now here's one where we're going to take a parameter to the context, and I'm not taking it from the command line quite yet. Um, I'm just going to make the parameter always be 42, and, and the key is, this is a key and this is a value. Um, so zap in this case is the key, and 42 is the value. I often call this variable context, but the fact that's just a mnemonic memory thing for me, context or CTX is what I tend to call it. And now I'm passing in um, the temple, the, the template, this template here, the guest, guest.html template, and it has one little curly brace substitution. And remember that does escaping for us automatically, so there's no need to use escape the way there was when we are doing this via concatenation. That alone is a good reason to use templates. And so this ends up sending out your guess is 42. So this is just really focusing on what's in that context and how the things come out of the context. This name here, zap, in the context means pull the thing out of the context under the string name zap and then it substitutes the results like the 42 so instead of it saying guess was zap it's your guess is 42 so that's that's really focusing on the substitution so this is showing us how we do the safe stuff in case you actually want to pass some html into a template and actually want it to render as html not as html entities or html 
and any style. Um, so we're sending in a thing that's bold with a B and a less than B. That's HTML. It's got less thans and greater thans in it. And then we got zap. And so you can see that um, the zap comes out as 42. It's, it's HTML entities, but it has no special characters. But if we escape text, text is the one with the, the HTML entity characters, that automatically escapes it so that you see the less thans and greater thans in the browser output. Escaped, less than B, bold, greater than B, right? And if you say text and then add the safe filter to the end of it, that says don't escape it. And so then this bold goes right into the HTML document. And instead of you seeing the less thans and greater thans, you're actually seeing the text turn to bold. Now, usually the bad, bad folks that are trying to get into your computer are not just turning your text to bold, they're trying to run JavaScript. And all we're showing here is that whatever less thans and greater thans would be in that context value txt, they're going to end up literally in the document and the browser is going to interpret them as HTML. I mean, there's just no way that somehow your browser knows the, the, the HTML that came from your program versus the HTML that came from a context variable. Because by the time it gets to the browser, it's all one thing. So it doesn't know, oh, wow, that, that's dangerous. That came from a variable. No, by the time the response goes back to the browser, it's just a blob of text. Now we can talk about some loops here. I am passing in uh, two arrays, apple, orange, banana, and lychee. And then I'm passing another array called n with peanut and cashew. And then I'm going to uh, create a context. And in that context, I'm going to have fruits point at the list f, nuts point at the list n, uh, list n, and then zap is just the string 42. And uh, do I even use zap in this one? No, I think there's another place that it... No, oh yeah, yeah, it, it's, I just don't have it in the... the um... So here's the, here's the template, a part of the template. It's not looking at zap. And so here's the key. So you, we got this for loop. 4x in fruits. Well, fruits is looking up something in the context under the key fruits. They're string. They don't look like strings in. They don't look like strings in the template, um, but it looks up there and it finds a list. So that little list f is what really is going on here, and f is a list of apple, orange, banana, lychee, and then x becomes the iteration variable. That's only within the template. And then I'm going to print it out, and then I'm going to end it. So that's like the start and end of a for loop, apple, orange, banana, lychee. Now, you'll notice that I have an li tag, which is the list item tag, and it just generates all that HTML. And again, the double curly braces are doing HTML entity escaping automatically. So, um, so we take a look at uh, nuts. So we ask, is, is nuts present? Because that's a way to tell if there are, if, if, uh, if variables present or absent. If it's absent, I'm going to ask another filter on the end saying, how long was it? Okay, and so this is just, this is the n, nuts is the n list, and it has a length of two, which means it has two elements in it, and so we see the number two. And so you can do various things. So this is, and this is an if then else, the syntax of an if then else. In, with curly brace, uh, curly brace percent. Now we can pass objects within objects, and so it's a little tricky. We have a context in this x variable, and the sort of the outer key is pointing. The key is outer is pointing to another dictionary, and in that dictionary there is an, a key of inner with a value of forty two. And then we render the nested.html, and you see the outer, but then outer.inner, that's, so outer is, is that object, and then object.inner, then this thing becomes 42, okay? So you can kind of walk through objects if you have uh, uh, hierarchical objects, objects that are objects that contain objects or lists that contain objects or any number of hierarchical structure of lists and objects, you can walk through them. <clears throat> so here's just another simple example. This one has uh, data coming in instead of hard-coded. So we again have, uh, you know, game 200 and we're running into game view. Uh, it's a class view. And 
The 200 comes in as the parameter because we said it's the parameter that comes after the word game. And so guess comes in as 200. It's a string at this point. It hasn't been converted to an integer. So when Django pulls these off, well, it's a, it does some validation based on the types, but it doesn't actually necessarily convert them. Um, and so we're going to create a context, x equals get, uh, you know, a key of guess and convert it to an integer to pass it in. And then we're going to pass the context in and the template in. And so the, the word guess is going to come out. And we sort of saw this, the guess is 200. And then depending on the if then else logic, it's going to say, in this case, too high because your guess was 200. And of course, the right answer is always 42. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how you manage a common text going from one template to another through template inheritance.